Dr. Bacher at the Natural Science Museum in Houston, and this week is Shark Week. <laughs> and uh, so we got the Megalodon uh, jaw being built upstairs, and it's also known as the giant tooth. These seven inch serrated. They're way teeth. big. You got yeah. to hold them, I assume? I have not yet. You haven't? No. Well, you've got to go up and do it. They're a surprise because they're, they're huge. Big one to go that size. But the saw edge is exceedingly fine. I expected a great big ragged saw edge because these things ate whales and elephants and whatever else. But a very fine saw. We don't know why. And that is solvable if we talk to people who know saws, like people who butcher cows and whatnot. So, you just said that you mentioned that they eat elephants and whales. We know you should ask, how do you know that? How do you know that? You saw it just blowing uh, smoke. Because sharks are, you know, okay. their bodies Here are the clues. Here are the clues. Okay. You know, both of you already know, that sharks shed their teeth and grow new ones all mm -hmm. the time, which means teeth are falling out of a shark during its life, particularly where it feeds. So, if you dig carefully and find a spot with lots and lots of shed teeth, there should be the remains of what the shark ate. We call those paleontological bullets, the shed teeth. You can buy it down there thousands of them. I've worked a little bit at Shark Tooth Hill in California, one of the richest localities for Megalodon. And there are whale skeletons there with cut marks that match the shape the edge the megalodon teeth yeah. and there are also seals sea lions big guys 13 footers and there are giant turtles and small sperm whales in fact smaller than today's and there are mastodon bones also chewed up so they ate elephants they ate sea lions they ate sperm whales and they ate um, other whales we know it because the csi people and as you say they um, extract thousands and thousands of teeth each year, or throughout their lifetime. And uh, Nicholas Stino is one who coined stoned teeth. Could you elaborate on that? Nicholas Stino is a fabulous guy because he's been beatified. He's on his way to become a saint. Yeah, one of the very first and, paleontologists. And he's the father of stratigraphy and paleontology. Mm -hmm. You know, the penny dropped in his head about, hmm, we find these ancient things. How are we going to figure them out? Well, we look at modern day things and he looked at shark teeth and shark heads carefully it was a shark announced and then he could go to these tongue stones yeah, which tongue have been stones. known for hundreds of years and people use them for folk medicine I said wait a minute this is not medicine these are sharks, big sharks and he also was the first to figure out that in layers of rock the top layer is the youngest because it was deposited last and in the bottom one is the oldest and that's Pretty fundamental, but that's not why he's canonized. He's canonized because after being a Protestant scientist for a long time, he got sick and tired of watching Protestants fight with each other, Calvinists, anti-Calvinists, and he said, I've got to do my part to unite all of Christianity, so he joined the Catholic Church, and the Pope appointed him to a um, committee mm -hmm. to reform the Vatican hierarchy. And that's what killed him. He spent the last decades of his life trying to reform bureaucracy. If you look at his portraits, he gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And thinner. Why? Because of meetings. Meeting after meeting after meeting. Which I find interesting about uh, Stino is that, you know, he is, you know, in the 1600s, he was, you know, the very first paleontologist. Yep. And then 200 years later, there's, you know, Richard Owen, who coined Dinosauria. He did indeed, although dinosaurs have been found... Much earlier, probably by 1660, people in but Oxfordshire. Then it took 200 years for them to... Well, dinosaurs are a bit of a puzzle because they mixed some things that lizards have. Like, they had steak knife teeth, too. Mm -hmm. Meat-eating dinosaurs. And yet, their bones were hollow like giant birds, and their hips were really strong like giant mammals, and it really puzzled people. Until finally they realized these were things that don't exist today, combining all those true features. But Stino, man, it's going to be a saint. Very nice. Congratulations, Stino. Is a saint. <laughs> so, uh, you know, with Makes you saying... Makes you want to be a Catholic, doesn't it? <laughs> Possibly. Ah. 
<laughs> There's more than that. Uh, good food. <laughs> good music. <laughs> good art. Sure. <laughs> There's music. I'll listen to MXPX. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you say um, with uh, the reptiles puzzled everyone, there are over 400 species of sharks. I mean, they're being cold-blooded, but then... No, they're not. No, they're no, not. No, no, that's, know, that's, so not that's what I was about to say. That's that's just what I was about sharks to say. are not all cold. Yeah, that's what I was, I was yes. just about so, to say. I'm that. sorry. With uh, the great, do it again. The, I'll act surprised. Yes, okay. No, with the great white shark being take two. The great <laughs> white shark, as well as uh, the thrasher shark and a couple Poor others. Beagle. And uh, what, do what? Poor beagle shark. Yeah. Poor shark. And um, so was the megalodon shark also warm blooded? Was it? Probably. The problem with the megalodon is we have nothing but the teeth. We don't have the jaws, we don't have the brain case, we don't have fins, yeah. and that's tough. Um, for a long time it was assumed they were like white sharks, maybe just a really big white shark. Analysis of the teeth indicate maybe not, maybe they belong to a whole different family, maybe. Um, the reason some sharks are warm-blooded is they're constantly swimming, and the heat released by the muscles in swimming is retained in the body by counter current exchangers, that is the, the hot blood in capillaries like this and the cold blood coming from colder tissue across like that. And the heat is exchanged, you know, the way refrigerators work. And a shark constantly swimming, like a macro shark or a white shark, mm -hmm. can keep its body temperature up quite a few degrees above the water temperature. Now, if the white shark did that, it would be warm blooded as long as it was active. Whether it was or not, boy, that's tough. Right now we can't tell. Not yet. So uh, if someone would just find a white shark with the cartilage preserved, no one has. Well, I feel like convergent evolution describes the acquisition of the same biological trait and related um, Happens lineages. All so the time. How, like, how closely related are great whites and megalodons? No one knows. No one knows. Though so when I was in college, they were in the same genus, Carcharodon. Megalodon was what we called the megalodon. Well, Carcharodon is the group of species that include the white shark. If you call it Carcharodon megalodon, you're saying it's really closely related to the white shark. Yeah. Real close. They're like this. Most people, most shark specialists don't do that. They say Carcharodon, the white shark's in one family, lots of species. Megalodon's in another family, and they're two different branches of the shark family tree and they ain't that close. Very interesting. And um, with the uh, uh, lions, they have 600 PSIs and the shark that you're building up there got over one ton of... You could bite a school bus in half. School bus in half. A school bus full of kids. Uh, it's just a great big sardine can for making And it's flavor. with them being, you know, the most powerful But why is the saw so fine? I know about saws. My grandfather was a carpenter. I don't get it. That's still being puzzled of. Yeah. You know, then with, you know, with having such powerful jaws, they can just thrash you some, but not having. I think, although they're powerful, they're precision tools still, because they're finely serrated. If they're coarsely serrated, yeah, it I've seen would the be serrated. like a, uh, a ripping saw. My grandfather used to call it with the grain and cut really fast, big teeth. A fine saw is for cutting across the grain, something that's difficult to cut. Well, where do they cut it? Big teeth. Are bones whales that hard to cut? Yeah, maybe the bones? Maybe, yeah. Like a bone saw, maybe? <laughs> I mean, it looks a little like a hacksaw. A hacksaw is used for something really tough, maybe. You know, they're eating elephants, they're eating whales, and why are they extinct today? They went long before the Ice Age, they didn't make it into the most recent epic Paleo. of mammal evolution. They made it into the late Miocene or Pliocene, like a couple million years ago. And then they're gone. Uh, even though their prey, it's mostly whales, continue to get bigger and more diverse, there's more megalodon prey alive today than when the megalodons lived. So it's not the lack of prey. Plenty of things for megalodon to eat right now wasn't that. Maybe something else. Hmm. Don't know what that percentage is. 
And uh, I guess the last question we've got. So I'm gonna do a two shot here. We'll zoom in on a hacksaw blade and somebody with a rip saw. You know, if we had that technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um, through okay, so um, I guess last question is: um, humans have made a, you know chemicals to prevent mosquitoes from biting, mm -hmm. and they've also found ways of keeping bears from tearing up campsites. Sometimes. Yeah, and um, for sharks, it is said through um, uh, tonic mobility, as you may know, you know, you can keep them paralyzed. But then um, through tests, uh, scientists have tested with magnets that will snap them out of that and they'll jolt away from the shark. Being, uh, uh, the basic shark sensory mobilized. system is more complicated than ours. They have electrosensory organs, which we don't have, which can mm -hmm. pick up changes in the electric field. Many sharks and other fish can detect a totally buried fish because they can detect the electric field generated by the nervous system of the muscles of that buried fish. They also have pressure sensitive cells called the lateral line system which detect pressure waves in the water, very delicate ones. And many fish, probably sharks too, actually get a mental picture of a moving object entirely through the pressure waves. You know whether it's big or little it has a long skinny tail or lots of lots of feet, so they have all of that. Plus the regular sense of smell, plus pretty good eyesight, plus basic hearing, major uh, compression waves through the water. They have all of that. And most most devices to repel sharks try to overload one system or the other. Um, and so the best way to avoid being bit is to have water. Go there. Go. <laughs> Don't go there. But say had uh, one had to go in the water and they still existed, you know, into a, you know magnets. How big would that magnet be to repel a knuckle dog? Well, again, the the magnet device hasn't been tested on many species of shark. I mean, there are sharks. Yeah, I mean, megalodon belongs to a family that's a different group of species from whites and poor beagles and threshers and hammerheads. And makos, the species that will attack yeah, the people. Makos. You don't. You don't know yet. You just don't. You no, the water. other thing is, Megadon's much too big to worry about you. They're not worth the effort of trying to catch you. There's a built-in loss of maneuverability the bigger you get, yeah. which is why lions don't chase mice, unless they're bored. Because <laughs> the mouse will turn this way and the lion's going to swat, 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 swat. Catch enough. Uh, you can't catch enough mice as a lion to make it worthwhile. We're just too Opposed small. Close to the whale shark eating. Yeah, we, we and the the whale, the whale shark has, has a strainer, has a sieve to take mm -hmm. out little plankton, tiny fishes and and invertebrates. Megalodon's going after very big objects. It would not chase you if it saw you in the water. Full kids. <laughs> right. I think it's the picture's best if they all have a. Green check uniform from the local um, <laughs> Saint Stino Academy of uh, Science and the Dance. And things. Okay, cool. Now you don't have to worry about making it up. Baby make it up, maybe, but baby would cool. probably be. Well, we don't know that either. Yeah, I was we don't know whether they laid eggs or to... whether they had live birth, as many sharks do. And that's called have, viviparous, or yeah. Um, many sharks have live birth. And the number and size of the young varies. Could make it down have many, many, many small young or just a few pups? Pups. You know, shark kids are called And did they pups. eat each other? Or? Um, depends on yeah. the food availability. Was there a pseudoplacenta? Some mm -hmm. sharks actually have a connection between the mom, mm -hmm. the bloodstream, and the bait developing embryo. And potentially you could have a newborn megalodon that was very big and very mature. Actually, the guys who collect megalodon teeth may have the data. They may have the minimum size of megalodon tooth, which would give you probably the birth size. Nice. That's all good. Interesting. So, um, with all this Shark Week uh, talk, what are you, um, besides filming a draw, are you doing anything to celebrate Shark Week? We are indeed. We're, we'll be giving programs uh, all this week, and then a week from Friday, a week from Saturday on the 13th is a big members' night to celebrate all things paleontological. Sharks, very cool. and other sharks, and to mention on the finback, the 
first land animal to have saw edge teeth, and T Rex with saw edge teeth, and raptors, and we're bringing lots of saws. This is what I did. People to I did. Saws. Check that out. Bam! The whole cake is that wash off? No, it doesn't wash off. I celebrate my shark week by getting it tattooed. Well, that's Look. a real tat. It's a real tat. Okay. <laughs> you got a shark week tattoo? No, it's against my religion. Oh. It's in Levitical law. <laughs> Can I cut your body as the heathen do? It's right there in the Bible. What about the Bible? <laughs> what about the Bible? <laughs> These megalodons live and die before Noah. I don't think <laughs> Noah really existed. <laughs> Somebody like Noah probably did at some point. Yeah. Because he's in a bunch of myths and he seemed to have some factual basis. It's not just Jewish myths, but there are others. Like, um. I got a question for you, Joe. Sue? Sue? Yes, a lot. I know the guy who dug it up. Yeah? Yeah. I read the book. It's amazing. I like it. Yeah. Uh, the Black Hills folks, Peter Larson, they're wonderful folks. And they were just railroaded by a corrupt legal system in South Dakota by a really inefficient judge. And the reason these charges were brought against Pete Larson, who dug Tyrannosaurus Earth, was pure jealousy on the part of PhDs. Academics aren't necessarily the nicest people you can meet. So having a PhD does not mean you tell the truth. It was horrible. I followed it case pretty carefully. And I didn't follow it as, as it happened. I read the book and yeah. It was it's pretty, pretty dang awful. See, the government, if they want to, can convict you of something. Mm -hmm. Because they'll, they'll throw maybe at 312 charges against you. Figuring the jury is going to convict you of something. The theory being juries will believe the government doesn't lie completely. Well, they do sometimes. And if you have 330 charges against you, a lot of juries will figure you've got to be guilty of something prosecutor and the, the government lie sometimes actually so the, where does uh, Sue stand today Sue stands up on metal supports in the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago it's a fine museum I was just in Chicago the other day and that's also where they have the two lions they do indeed I shot was, by Colonel Patterson mm -hmm. I was really disappointed that I missed all that the lions who ate hundreds of railroad workers yeah which really upset the union the man shop eaters. stewards. Yeah, stop the railroad. Great book. And Colonel Patterson, the guy who finally shot them, was the father of my professor when I was in grad school. Wow. Brian Patterson, who was a full professor at Harvard, and he didn't have a college degree to his name. He was totally self-taught. Wow. He was a full professor at Harvard. Amazing. It is. It is indeed. Very cool. Well, hey, thank you so much. I don't want to interrupt any more of your time. That's okay. Um, thanks for coming. Come again. And thank you so much. It's it's fun to watch the kids' reaction to the fossil, especially something really big and scary like like the jaw. When it was first put up yesterday, one little tyke came by and pointed at it and said, "Tyrannosaurus Rex." Because <laughs> it was really big and like saw edge teeth. Of course, that mouth is six times bigger, bigger than T Rex. Than. Yeah. <laughs> but T Rex too has. Very fine serrations on the saw. Maybe we should have worked on that. Go to the meat packing <laughs> sector of Houston. I don't know where that is. There must be somewhere around here. Talk to the guys who cut meat. What do you what do you use a finer saw for? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe wood is not the best analogy. Yeah. And we'll T Rex teeth are very blunt, which is a real surprise. You hold one, it's much blunter than the shark. Shaped like a banana. Saw edge banana. It's not sharp at all. Why? No. <laughs> we can figure this out. Someday. Yeah. Next year. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, you bet.